Hey everybody, we're back again for another week of Journey Kids at Home. Mr. Josh checking in, I'm ready to rock and roll. We don't need any supplies this week. Literally just need you and your crazy imagination. And of course, we have to have our Bible. And I'd really like if all the adults in the house would join us. So go grab them, go grab your Bible, and I'll be right back for our arrival activity. See you in a sec. again. Mr. Josh, do you have everything you need? Did you get your Bible? Are the adults in the room with you? And did you bring your imagination? Because we're going to need it today. This week, we are continuing our conversation about friendship. And we're going to talk about how friends forgive one another. And they do it a lot. And they do it all the time, even when they don't get it back in return. Because friends love each other that way. So, as we start to talk about forgiveness, I want to do a little activity with you guys. I have drawn a heart. This stands for the love and the friendship that you share with your friends. And inside of here, I'm going to write what you guys think it means to forgive or what forgiveness is. So I'm going to quiet down and I'm going to listen to you guys. And as I hear you, I'm going to write in what forgiveness is. Ready? Go. What is it? Tell me. Okay. Not being mad when somebody treats you badly. Okay. Mad when treated bad. Not being mad when treated bad. That's a good one. Not getting mad when treated bad. What else is it? Okay. Not punishing Someone for breaking the rules. Okay. What else do y'all got? I'm a slow writer, but they're in there. What's next? What else is forgiveness? Oh, something like the golden rule. Treating others like you want to be treated. So maybe if you do something that hurts somebody's feelings, you would want to be forgiven. So you kind of do that for other people. I'll take that. Others as you want to be treated. All right. All right. What's another one? What's another one? Let it, okay, okay. Letting it go when someone hurts your feelings. Good, good, good. What's that? What else? What else? A few more. A few more. Maybe one or two. Not getting even. Okay, so maybe somebody comes over and, and destroys your artwork. and You don't go back over there and destroy their artwork. You let it go. Okay, not getting even. I like that. All right, one more thing. Maybe it's a practical example. Maybe it, it's something that you've seen in your own house, maybe. Okay, see, let me hear, let me hear. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Being nice to your sibling, okay, even though they aren't nice to you, okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, the heart's pretty full and y'all had some really, really good ideas. Today we're going to talk about a story about Jesus and Peter and how Jesus, a friend of Jesus, a close, close follower of Jesus, denied Jesus in one of the most 
important times of their lives. He forsook Jesus. He acted like he didn't even know Jesus when Jesus really needed a friend. But we'll see that Jesus forgave Peter for that because Jesus is the best friend anyone could have. Before we get to all that, before I end up ruining the story, we have to do some worshiping and we have to sing some songs. So everybody on your feet, here I go. I'm going to step away. You know what time it is. We got to clap our hands, do a little dancing for Jesus. It's worship time, everybody. Let's get to it. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful because I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another. You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with our love Yeah. 
my Journey Kids Elementary. It's Miss Nahana, and today is the last Sunday that we will be going over Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. Well, let me go ahead and read that for us. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. All right, so just in a couple of moments, you'll see a slide pop up that will give you instructions on what to do, but basically um, you'll see words from this memory verse disappear, and I want you to say the memory verse each time a word disappears, and hopefully you've been practicing this month and have this verse memorized and hiding it in your heart. Continue to love your friends, encourage them, and help them um, no matter where they are in their life. And you know what? I will see you next week as we learn a new memory verse. Bye. Have a good week. Five minutes on the other side, and I will have the perfect imaginary burger. Hey there, Haley here. I am practicing for a cookout I'm having next week, and I'm not actually cooking anything right now. <laughs> I'm inside. That would be a cook in. <laughs> so I've never really cooked for any of my friends before, so I just wanted to be prepared because I want them to still be my friends after the cookout's over. Just kidding, that's not how friendship works. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. I don't think friends should stop being friends for little things like food tasting bad. Mmm, oh, it's delicious. And I think you can even stay friends with someone if they say, accidentally burn you with a hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, hot, hot. Friendship can last through most anything. Unless a friend makes fun of my hat, then it's over. Oh, time to flip an imaginary burger. <sighs> Woo. Today's story is about a time when one of Jesus' friends did something really bad. Jesus could have flipped out. <laughs> but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. I'll see you soon. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, can't turn the camera off with the mitts. Sorry. Haley inspired this here self-proclaimed grill master to have a cookout of my own. And while these fixins are a grillin', I want to encourage you to join me in John 21 verses 4 through 8 which will serve as a preview of the story that you are about to see. So, as we continue our conversation about the importance of friendship, I'm really excited for you to hear about the special bond between Jesus and his good buddy Peter. So as you flip to John 21, 4 through 8, I got three questions for you. Are you ready to get grilled? <laughs> Question number one. How many times did Peter deny knowing Jesus? He's not proud of any of them, but Peter denied Jesus three times. Question number two. Jesus was close to all of his disciples, 
but can you name one, two, or three of them that he was the closest to? Yeah, Peter, James, and John really were offered opportunities that allowed them to get closer to Jesus that other disciples didn't have. Question number three. This one is gonna be tricky. So in John 21, is this before, during, or after Jesus' time on earth? So this is after Jesus was crucified, but before he ascended into heaven. Okay, he was still making appearances on earth to his disciples. All right, folks, before we start to read, let's go ahead and go over the three things we know about the Bible. Number one, it is true. Every story in the Bible really happened. Two, it's one big story. All the stories together tell us how much God loves us. And three, it's all about Jesus. He is the hero who came to rescue us. Okay, my friends, grab your Bibles. We're going to read John 21, 4 through 8. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Ah, Jesus has done it again. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. Oh, I can't wait for Jesus and Peter to be reunited at last. Now, if you don't mind, I got some business to attend to and some fish to grill of my own. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared he told three different people he wasn't Jesus' friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast a net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, 
I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. Ugh. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, 10. Whoa, need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's got some and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lappy water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Okay, so picture this. You have a best friend. You do everything together. You eat together. You play games together. You tell each other everything. And then when your life gets really hard and you need your friend there the most, your friend pretends she doesn't even know you. That's not cool, friend. Wouldn't that make you so mad? It would make me want to say goodbye to that friend forever. But Jesus didn't do that when Peter pretended not to know him. Instead, even though he must have felt so hurt inside, Jesus forgave Peter. Now, I know what you may be thinking. It was pretty cool for Jesus to forgive Peter like that. But guess what? Jesus forgives you and me like that too. Anytime we mess up, we break a rule, or we do something we know is wrong, Jesus forgives us. That's because he loves us so much and because our relationship is more important to him than our mess ups. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus forgives us, so we should forgive others. Our friendships should be more important than our mess ups. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive. It's not. You're going to need God's help, but get this. When you choose to forgive, it can help you feel better inside. It can help your friend feel better inside, and it'll make your cookouts way more enjoyable. <gasps> Speaking of, this imaginary corn is almost done roasting. Oh, look at that. <sighs> oh, what? They're real. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, again with the mitts. Now, wasn't that an awesome story? Like I said, isn't it such a beautiful thing to see Jesus be a great friend to Peter? 
I don't know if I could be such a good and forgiving friend if one of my buddies decided to let me down in such a crucial moment. But hey, that's why I'm always trying to be more like Jesus. And you should too. This week, I've got something extra special for you because as you know, it's time to review. But there are people who are more creative and far, far smarter than Mr. Josh, believe it or not. And they've created a wonderful review game for this week. So I'm going to pass it to them. There's going to be a video, and you're going to play a game along with them. Cool? All right. I'll see you in just a minute, and I'll take us into the more serious stuff. You know, the application questions. See you in a bit. The Forgiveness Game. How many times did Peter say that he didn't know Jesus? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, one million. C, three. early morning hours, they saw someone standing on the shore. Who did they see? A. A sea captain. B. Jesus. C. King Herod. D. Peter's mom. Diddy ding. B. Jesus. cook for them? A. Cheerios B. Pancakes C. French toast D. Fish and bread D. Fish and bread How many fish did they catch? A, 153, B, 365, C, 525,600, D, 1 million. Ding, A, 153. What did Jesus say to Peter? A. I forgive you. B. Do you know who I am? C. Feed my lambs. D. How, Peter, how could you? Ding. C. Feed my lambs. When Jesus said, feed my lambs, what was he talking about? A. His pet lambs. B. The lambs at the Nazareth Zoo. C. His pet fish. D. His followers. D. His followers. Hope you had fun playing that game, because now it's time to get to the nitty gritty. It's time to challenge you to take this lesson home. So I have a few questions for you, like regular, and of course they're going to come up on the screen after I leave, but here they are. How do you usually react when a friend hurts you? And don't think physically hurt, think they talk to you badly, they let you down, they missed you some of your, to your stuff, maybe they broke your toys, uh, maybe they said some ugly things about you behind your back. Think about things like that. So how do you usually react when your friends hurt you or mistreat you? Number two, how can you show forgiveness to a friend beyond just accepting an apology? So how can you show forgiveness beyond saying, it's okay, I forgive you? But how can you actually show them that you forgive them? Last question, how does Jesus teach us about forgiveness? And how can you forgive in that way? 
hint, hint, there's a really great example in our story from this week. All right, I'll give you some time to work with those. I'll come back and close us out and pray for us. See you guys in a little second. Okay, this week we have been talking about how friends forgive one another. And I know how hard it can be to forgive people. Even in the short bit of life that I've lived, there have been a lot of times where things have happened to me or been done to me where I just couldn't move past them. But luckily, we have a Savior in Jesus who has perfected what it means to forgive, both as a friend and as our God. And so my challenge for you this week is to look past the difficulties, uh, to look to Jesus for the strength, and and to really uh, convince yourself, to really sell out to the idea that you are going to forgive your friends even when it's hard, that you're going to try to look past just accepting an apology, but going out of your way to to reestablish and recommit yourself to that friendship. Brothers and sisters, my, my, my little brothers and sisters, I know that this will be the hardest lesson that you will have to learn as you grow up. One of the hardest lessons. And so I just want to encourage you that even when you fail to forgive properly, you've been forgiven for that. This is always a work in progress. But when we forgive our friends, we strengthen our friends. Uh, personally, we strengthen our friendships, the bond that we have between one another. And ultimately, we glorify God. We make God's forgiveness known when we're willing to forgive people who have done us wrong. So strive towards that. Seek that. Search for that. Strengthen yourself. And talk to your parents about it. Pray about it. Read your Bible about it. Really, really focus in on being a person that just gives forgiveness freely.
that is that has it in abundance. All right? I'm going to pray for us. I know that was a lot, but I'm going to pray for us, and I'm going to send you away. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have first forgiven us of our trespasses, that you have seen us in our sin and called us out of it, Lord, and loved us despite of our sin. Lord, I ask that as my young brothers and sisters go about life and they begin to build friendships and they begin to, to, to interact with others socially in bigger and bigger ways, Lord, that when they are mistreated, when they are done wrong, Lord, that they would remember how they have been forgiven and forgive those people freely. Lord, that they wouldn't expect an apology first, that they wouldn't expect things to be made right, that, that they wouldn't want to get back at people, but that when they are done wrong, they would freely forgive. Lord, and that their friendships would be built stronger for that, and that their friends will see that and experience your forgiveness through them, Lord God, and that ultimately how they navigate being mistreated and hurt and done wrong will ultimately point people to you in your glory. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at this dude. It's crazy. All right, guys. That's all I have for this week. I'll be seeing you next week. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.